Hello and welcome to the Sands of Tom Review channel. It's Sammy Thunder here. Now, it is quite obvious that you may have noticed that this is a watch that I made my first video on. It is the Seiko SPB129J1, the Seiko Crown Passage. It's also quite obvious that, you know, that those who own this watch either love the look of this watch or are diehard Seiko collectors and appreciate the vast expanse of Seiko history. This example here is paying a march to the Seiko Crown Mono Pusher chronograph from the 1964, which commemorates the first international sport event held in Japan. Hence, this is a 1964 piece limited edition. Now, that the Crown, Crown Passage is a 1964 piece limited edition, it's often dubbed now as the new design in the new Style, 60, style 60s offered in the Passage line, which is a much more affordable lineup. Crown Passage presents with much higher benefit and after one year of ownership I would like to give you guys my insight on this watch and an in-depth review. Also a comparison and my thoughts towards the new Seiko style 60s. Firstly, the watch presents itself within a 41.3mm diameter case, a very short 11.3mm thickness and a lug to lug length of 48.3mm. The watch also features a non-screw down crown and 100 meters of water resistance and also the signature Seiko caliber the 6R35 featuring a Spron mainspring which offers great anti-magnetic benefits and high durability. This is a workhorse caliber and one day I will explain the technology behind Seiko's movements. The watch also has sapphire crystal with an excellent application of AR coating on the underside and this is something you should expect at this price point. The watch itself presents in die shield coating, watch head and bracelet included. So it's much more prone to scratching. I haven't noticed many scratches over the year. Again, full, full polish case back with the limited edition number on the back. Very plain and straight to the point. Where this watch shines is with the unique dial. Many have openly stated that they don't really know what this watch is meant to be. The watch design ethos was actually used in a limited edition Seiko Presage chronograph before and is used now with the new release of the mechanical chronographs that are part of the new speed timer function or series. Again this watch is an homage to the mono pusher crown chronograph however without the crown, crown chronograph function. It is a simple three hander. It would have been amazing if they had released the mono pusher chronograph but you know going and investing into that movement may have potentially been, you know, a high cost, low reward situation and at the end of the day, Seiko was a business. But the watch is nice. It features applied indices, full polished Dolphin handset, applied logo and date window. It has a nice mirror polished rim and a DLC coated frictionless bezel with a signed crown, like you'd expect on a Prasad series watch. Also features a three link oyster style bracelet as well. The star of the show again is the dial. The metallic green sunburst dial is a beauty to look at. However, it presents mostly emerald in color. So it is not as bold as maybe something like the Oris uh, Hang Gang Limited Edition. It's much more muted and can easily be worn as an everyday piece. The dial features a minute track for ease of legibility. Applied indices glisten with the light. So low light legibility is very, very good as this watch will reflect whatever light comes at it. If that wasn't enough, it also features Loom, and we all know of Seiko Lumabrite and how good it is. The watch is a good everyday piece in hindsight, however, there are some things I felt that needed amending. When I first purchased this watch, it was running out of the Seiko 6R35 specifications. Seiko don't bother regulating the movement. It was sad to see such a limited piece not regulated, but this even extends to Seiko's higher end pieces as well. It seems like we need to go to Grand Seiko for better accuracy and consistency in movement performance. This movement is workhorse, don't get me wrong, it's great when regulated. At least within the tolerance, I don't really wear mechanical watches for accuracy anyway. Next thing is foreign debris. There are some particles and these are things we should start living with when we're trying to own a Seiko. It, it is just it is what it is. There's nothing, there's no escaping it. You may get lucky, you may be unlucky. Sometimes you have to deal with the things. Now, the last gripe I had with this watch was the bracelet. Don't get me wrong, it is a well-finished bracelet. In fact, I like it quite a bit. However, 
The way the links are held together does not inspire much confidence. It is the same mechanism that is used on the Seiko 5s. Just a pull-push pin. This is pretty ridiculous. And, you know, it doesn't even feature the pin and collar system. Yet, I still wear it on the bracelet. Until I can get another strap. Now, the bracelet also lacks a good clasp. It is a milled deployant, but features a massive gap in between the clasp lock and the bracelet. Some have described this kind of Seiko clasp as a can opener. It's not that big of a deal, nor did I really notice or care for it until I was made aware of it. Seiko should adapt the class system used in the Sark series of watches. They lie flush with the bracelet. For example, the baby snowflake, the Sark 55. Sublime. This is no Grand Seiko. It features a grammar of design, but not to the pinnacle like Grand Seiko but it's a charming piece. It's thin for a 6R35 watch. It offers many strap options with a 20mm lug width. It's easy to use one finger use crown. It's very easy to manually wind this. It features a very unique dial, case and dial, sorry. Those are reasons I purchased or Impulse bought this watch. However, with the new release of the Seiko Style 60s, I'm in question on what really is the value proposition. The new Style 60s features a nice box hardlex, and the box crystal really elevates the watch wonderfully. It literally features the same bracelet, however without the die shield coating, the same indices and handset with a different dial, and fitted with a nice 4R caliber of movement which you can see. The gold rotor is definitely much more pleasant to look at than what you get with the Crown Passage. The case, in fact, is the same too, from what I've experienced. What you lack is a sapphire crystal and the die shield coating. And is that worth the extra money? And that's up to you to decide. For me personally, I don't think it is. But for people that love the design, wanted something a bit special, and with the crystal that won't scratch, you'd be happy with this. All of the color variations are great, and at the end of the day, they look good, and you should get what you like. This is the sands of time exiting. Thanks.